Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you're welcome to press the thumbs up. If you don't like what I talk about, press the thumbs down. You can interact with my subscribers, you can share with your friends, or you can subscribe, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Now, what I wanted to do is a roundup. It's not really news, it's a roundup of opinions and thoughts and views. And my first um, topic is about how multifaceted the coronavirus is. I mean, really. Can you imagine a virus having so much power? It's not only shut down all the airlines and all the airports and all the seaports around the world. It has managed also to um, slow down the economy. It's a managed to isolate people and keep everybody in their homes. It's managed to create emergency laws that give license for the police to go in and do whatever they need to do. It's managed to uh, almost create some kind of segregation by saying that all oh, the the virus is only going to tackle is only is only um, is disproportionately affecting black people and minority ethnics as though oh my goodness if you go near a, a black person or an ethnic minority you might catch it we don't want them starting off this segregation lock now do we because that is what the virus seems to be able to do it's got that power it can and, and it's fueled by the media it's fueled by social influences it's fueled by social media so we have to be very careful what we take into our brains. Our brains are relaxed most of the time and very susceptible. We have to make sure that what we take into it is what we want to take in. And what else? How, what other powers does it have? Well, it has the powers to shut down all the businesses. It's had the power to justify vaccinations. It's had the power to um, furlough all these employees. I mean, what has this virus not had the power to do. It's had the power to um, to have mass, um, what do you call it, cremations. It's had the power to separate um, people from the dead, from their deceased, their family members. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. The power this one dege dege virus has. And in, in particular, in America and in the UK. In the other, like in other countries, it doesn't seem so bad. But there again, we don't live there. So we don't know. We don't know the, um, the impact. And unless you kind of are in all these other countries or you get privy to that information, you're kind of stuck with what you know. So this is just what we're seeing or what I'm seeing from my little space that's happening and the power that this coronavirus has. Um, but like I said, the imagination is an amazing thing. You know, you can create any story you want. And a lot of times when we create in our imagination, it's based on assumptions. And that could be based on life experiences. It can be based on our fears. It could be based on anything. We have to make sure that when we are imagining, when we are imagining what's going on now, it's in line with what we want to we want to see. It's in line with the outcome we want to see. We can't be imagining doom and gloom because doom and gloom is what you'll get. So we have to kind of be a bit more positive. It is difficult when everything is fueled by paranoia and fear. So I understand that. But we have to try and get a grip about what is actually happening, what is real. What seems real? What seems fabricated? What seems unreasonable? What makes sense? What doesn't make sense? Don't kind of quash your instincts. Don't quash your common sense. Don't let it, don't be a sponge and take everything in. You know, you have to do your own research. You have to do what, what makes sense to you. So all I'm saying is try to keep your head above water and try to keep calm and don't get um, too bogged down by all of this. Now, we know that Boris Johnson is now um, leaving St. Thomas's Hospital and he's going home. 
so that's good news for his girlfriend and his his baby that's on the way um and what else did i want to say oh rihanna crawford rihanna crotsford she's a community affairs correspondent bbc claims there is she's the community affairs correspondent for bbc and she claims that there is an emergent, emerging evidence to suggest coronavirus is having a disproportionate impact on people who are black, Asian and minority ethnic, i.e. the banes of society. Isn't that coincidental? Don't you think it's coincidental that the banes of society, you know, they've been talking about, oh, we want the immigrants out. We don't want any bloody immigrants in this country. Get rid of them. They can all go back where they come from. Do you think it's amazing that the coronavirus just happens to be disproportionately um, affecting these banes of society? I think it's quite coincidental. I wonder if the coronavirus is Brexit fuel. <laughs> Maybe it's got Brexit on its back. Oh, dear. If you don't laugh, you go crazy. That's all I can say. Anyway, um... So it goes on to say that blacks represent one third of the deaths. So if that is the case, that is about right. Two thirds white, one third, one third black and ethnic minorities. I think that's about that proportion is about right. The only reason why it sounds out of sync is because they are the, they are calculating per population. And that's just to inflate it, to make it look worse than what it is. You know, you can do anything with statistics. And that's what people do. They use statistics in whichever way it can to create the most, you know, hype. Because that's what the media is about. They want hype. So, but if you think about proportionately, blacks are one third dying and whites are two thirds. Well, blacks and ethnic minorities, they're not all blacks. But blacks and ethnic minorities are one third and two thirds are whites. Well, to me, that doesn't make it look as though, oh my God, it's so bloody terrible. Black people have got to stop feeling the victim because that is what people or whoever the powers that be are banking on. They're banking on you being paranoid. They're banking on you being a victim and having that victim mental mentality. Yes, it has affected a lot of the people, our friends, our family, and whatever. But it's also affecting white people's families and white people's um, nearest and dearest. So it's not just us. So once you put it into context, blacks are one third, blacks and ethnic minorities are one third, and whites are two thirds. It might help release, relieve that kind of paranoia, and that kind of fear that many of you may have. You might not have it, but if you do. Okay, so let's jump on to a totally different subject. Space travel. Now, are the wealthy chipping off to space and leaving us down here, all those people who can't afford £200,000 to go to space? Are we being left here to unravel the damage? the aftermath of the coronavirus. Anyway, let me tell you um, what I'm going to let me tell you what's going on. So Richard Branson, Space Tourism, has secured special dispensation to continue operating throughout the coronavirus outbreak. The source is The Telegraph on the 12th of April, which is today. So... It looks like it's full steam ahead, and I can't help wondering if space travel is going to be their getaway plan. The only thing is, I don't think it's been tested. You can't live out there. Who wants to float in weightless air and look at the Earth? I mean, really, what's so great about that? I mean, for Christ's sake. And then, you know, it, it, it's when you see people in those P, PPE equipments, the personal protective equipments, don't they look like they've just come from space? That's what they look like. So we've been prepared because they reckon, oh, won't they see a vision of us, you know, playing and working on space? I mean, honestly, you won't find many black people up there, I can tell you. They want to keep their feet firmly on the ground. 
In 2001, Dennis Tito became the first astronaut to pay for his own trip to space. Soon after that, billionaires offered space travel for anyone with 200,000 to spend on a ticket and 35,000 pounds a night to stay there. In 2000, UK pledged 2 million to fund horizontal space launches and more recently, 11.2 million to incentivize the commercial space flight. But Branson Virgin Galactica um, is the likely contender, of course, and he's going to um, have base part of its operation in either southwest England or Scotland. I don't know which part he's going to have his spaceport. Plans for spaceports have also been announced in Italy, United Emirates, Portugal, New Mexico. There probably are others, but those are the only ones I know about now. Spain is offering a cheaper option, zero to infinity, 36 kilometres into the stratosphere, using a balloon-borne pod and launcher. I don't think I fancy that. Apparently, it is a fraction of the cost, risk, risk and complexity. It costs 112000 for a ticket for a two-hour flight. It accommodates two pilots and four passengers. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. According to Morgan Stanley, Virgin Galactica space tourism business will fly people between Earth and space at hypersonic speeds inside the new Shepard capsule in 90 minutes. The claim, I saw something where it said 11 minutes for something. I don't know what that one was. The claim is that the hypersonic travel market could generate 800 billion in annual sales by 2040 and is being led by Elon Musk, that's Tesla executive, Jeff Bezos, that's Amazon co-founder, Sharma Palihapitiya, that's the former Facebook executive and billionaire tech investor, and of course, yours truly, Sir Richard Branson. Buoyed by the public support, government incentives, private sector in innovation, and that's according to Satellite, via Satellite. They envision a future where every day people will be living, working and playing in space. I mean, really. But you know what? The young people are more likely to do it, you know. It's only us old fogies that, you know, we're riddled with fear. <laughs> and we like things normal. We don't like change too much. So we'll keep stay down here and let them get on with it up there. You never know what the future is going to look like. Justin Bieber, Leonardo DiCaprio and Japanese art dealer Yusako Mezawa, Mezawa are among the 600 customers who have put down a £100,000 deposit to secure a place on Branson Spaceship 2. The balance of 100000 is to be paid, I assume, near the time. Like I said... I wouldn't get a kick out of that, floating weightlessly, looking at Earth. Not for me, love. Um, the Aurora Station, which is a space hotel, is scheduled for deployment in late 2022, early 2023. UK has emerged as a regional leadership leader in space sector as at 2001 and has two sites, one in England, southwest and another in Scotland. So how come we don't hear about all of this? Well, maybe we do. Maybe I just haven't kept my ears open. It envisages grant recipients offering horizontal launch services, which includes launching rocket-powered spacecraft from aeroplanes, which are already airborne from the UK in early 2020. That's now. I wonder if that's got anything to do with the RAF spaceship that we were it wasn't a spaceship i don't know what kind of military aircraft that was flying into luton airport I wonder if that's one of them that's going to have these rockets launching from it just never know ah well um here we are early 2020s covid 19 here so will we be left stranded while the mega rich escape to space <laughs> That's me and my mind um, going over to one. The thing is, is that the government expects landlords to offer free housing, business to furlough employees, 
and you know a lot of people to struggle through taking uh, sickness benefit and claiming universal credit but would you believe that the billionaire Richard Branson is telling his staff to take eight weeks unpaid leave billionaire cannot find 42 point million to pay his staff over the eight weeks or probably doesn't want to I mean I guess that's how the rich get rich they have to have an investment for any money they're putting in they don't pay out unless they're going to get something back and this is a prime example he's not going to be paying unproductive staff 500 pound a week to stay at home so I don't know what that, that, that lot, I think he's got 8,500 staff. I would say eight weeks unpaid leave because it would cost him 34 million if he were to pay them over an eight week period of non-productivity. Plus he has been hit the Virgin Cruises postponed and the launch of the new Scarlet Lady Cruise, that's been postponed. Flyby, which is part of Virgin, has collapsed. So I guess, given all that, he's like, I'm not about to fork out 34 million. I think I said 42 million. That was a mistake. I'm not about to fork out 34 million to pay staff to sit at home. Uh -uh. So you know that they are peed off. They're like saying, you know, he's the richest man in the world and he can't pay for our salaries. But the irony is that the little businesses are expected to. Uh, anyway, let's have some good news. Good news is that um, Prime Minister Holness said the government are considering reopening ports for controlled re-entry of Jamaicans who have been stranded overseas since the ports were closed to stem the spread of COVID-19 just over two weeks ago. So hopefully those students in Barbados can get back home. I mean, it must be awful to be stranded. In, in anywhere around the world. Um, the process um, will be streamlined. It will not be a wholesale re-entry, so they're not going to have everybody just coming back because they can't. They just have, don't have the space and it needs to be controlled. So they also need to understand the incomers' health status. Have they kept faithful to the quarantine requirements? And reporting. Those entering Jamaica will be isolated from, from the population and quarantined in a controlled manner. Seaports and airports are open to for cargo. And isn't it amazing? A little island like Jamaica. It's got itself over through the coronavirus. It's getting itself sorted. The economy is running. And um, while Western countries like America and the UK have just fallen flat on the feet. I mean, shouldn't they feel embarrassed and ashamed to think that a little island like Jamaica can, you know, can carry on and get everything moving and do what they need to do? And big countries like America and UK falling flat on its face, the whole economy bloody stops. Absolutely fascinating. I don't think. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for this roundup. I hope you have a wonderful day. Today's Easter Sunday. It doesn't feel like Easter Sunday, but it is Easter Sunday. Tomorrow is Easter Monday. Remember, save the NHS. Save your souls and yourself by staying inside. And yeah, just keep happy or try to keep happy. Keep motivated. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.